So uh, very quickly, who we are, we're your local friendly community group um, and uh, we're a not-for-profit entity uh, and we work on two things really, helping people develop renewable energy and energy efficiency schemes in Southwest London. And we also run uh, an outreach arm. So we'll be looking at things like energy cafes of so fuel poverty issues, um, uh, debt on meters, how to energy savings advice, a whole range of, of sessions. And typically we do those face to face because of COVID we convert that to a, an online phone service. So if you need help, check our website out and, and we can uh, probably assist. We also do um, some work on awareness of climate action. Uh, and we often do that through things like eco action games, so giant snakes and ladders, higher and low and things like that. We've mainly aimed that, that service at children so far, but we would love to do some adult sessions, see how adults kind of enjoy learning this way as well. So that's very quickly us. So just thinking about your home and, and the carbon you're consuming, that there's been lots of conversations and we saw that sort of walking and things like that and I'm sure that the council are going to have many more sessions on green spaces and transport and diet as well which is a, a, even more important really the, the, than this but as a starting point just give you an idea of the what, what you might be consuming these are typical numbers that you might get from Ofgem or Energy Savings Trust on what people consume so roughly 15,000 kilowatt hours of heat and that breaks down uh, with space heating and hot water heating and and that may vary depending on on your individual circumstances but this is a a standard say three bedroom home is is what they would expect so you're looking around about 3.2 tons of carbon uh to that, that that you're consuming having a gas boiler and then electricity wise it's around about three and a half thousand kilowatt hours and that's you know 0.8 of a ton so overall we're looking at four tons of carbon a standard household will consume. Now, how can we get rid of some of that? There's a very nice little graphic there of trees equivalent. So you can see how many trees a year that you're uh, you're chewing up, really. Uh, first thing people always say is fabric first. And uh, I won't spend too much time on the slide, but I know these will be handed out just so you had the information. Um, but the main thing is you lose a lot through your walls. And um, frustratingly, that's incredibly expensive uh, for, for a lot of us living in Southwest London because we live in solid brick homes. So you can easily expect to spend in a terraced house £8,000 to insulate the front and the back of, of your property. Um, so it's a lot and that will save you 35% on your on your space heating which might only be £200 a year. So it can be very, very long paybacks, which is why I think we're, we're going to see more, we're going to see more from the government to make those kind of measures work. Things that are easier, if you have a cavity, it will be a whole lot cheaper to, to fill that cavity. You know, you might only be looking at 750 a thousand pounds to, to fill a cavity. Um, but smaller measures are things like loft insulation. And the current re recommendations on loft insulation are 270 mm, uh, millimeters. So um, I'll rush through this slide very quickly, but that's a rough guide on all, all the different areas and, and rough costs on what you, each of those would cost. Um, in terms of renewables, there's two things really. We've got renewable generation, we've got renewable heat. So heat pumps, which um, Andrew's already touched upon, are the government's desired method for decarbonizing heat in homes. Uh, there's a lot of talk about carbon, uh, uh, sorry, about hydrogen, but hydrogen's some way behind in terms of pricing. And I think a lot of that is, is being driven by the owners of the gas grid, which is Cadent and SGN, wanting to keep in business really. But the, Research I've been reading, it, it doesn't look like you can get to parity on heat um, on uh, to gas until say 2040. So we're quite a long way off from that. So the government's looking to have 600,000 heat pumps a year to be installed over the next 10 uh, up to 2030. So it's a hell of a target. They're not really giving enough to support. But what we do have for the next year is something called the renewable heat incentive. So what that gives you is 10.54 p currently, and it does have degradations. Um, over the next seven years, if you install a heat pump, and that is based on what you consume or what is your deemed consumption of space heating and water heating basis your EPC. So you do have a known number in year one of what you will receive. Thereafter, that's index linked to inflation. So for a, for a standard home that maybe gets as high as 20,000 kilowatt hours, you can actually get 12,000 pounds back on your uh, on your uh, uh, um, RHI over a seven year cycle. So 
Other things to think about when you're looking at heat pumps is how well insulated your home is. Heat pumps run at a lower flow temperature than your gas boiler, which might be running at 75, 80. If you've got a condensing boiler, that should be running around about 60 and returning at 50, otherwise it's not condensing. These things run around about 50, 55 at, at a maximum level. So you may have to chunk up your radiators, you may have to improve your insulation, maybe improve your windows so that you can run at lower flow. You might also run a lower temperature over a longer period as another way of, of managing the, the, the heat load in your home. So they're factors to think about. Um, one other thing is where you're going to place your heat pump. Now, these things are about a meter long uh, and about a meter high and about 400, 500 mil deep. So they're pretty chunky units. They're, they're increasingly getting smaller and increasingly looking better. So it's quite a nice image there. And I think the one Andrew had is a very nice looking unit that he put a picture up on. Now, you do need to be a meter away on your boundary walls either side. So that's a really big factor. So you can eat at the front of the house may be an issue, especially in conservation areas. I've seen comments on conservation areas for solar PV, and that is a factor. Um, but this is this is the technology that we are moving towards. And what we're seeing is ever increasing efficiencies, particularly with air source heat pumps. The good thing, we live in London, so heat pumps are, are lose efficiency once they go over 55 degrees, but they also lose efficiency once they go below around about minus two. We don't often get that those kind of temperatures. And when you think the heating season, don't think of the freezing cold weather we had last month. That's that's a few days, really. You've got to think that actually the heating seasons often for many people start September, maybe October, runs, runs right through to April. In London, a lot of that time, it's well above, say, seven degrees. So your efficiency levels are going to be pretty decent on heat pumps living in London. Solar PV, uh, great scheme, going to be introduced by uh, Wandsworth Council. There's been trial schemes to that previously, so it's not like this is a new idea. So, so a lot of the teaming problems will have gone. I think five boroughs previously trialled this. I think Merton was one of those. So, you know, it's a good opportunity, and there are economies of scale. If you go and buy a solar PV pack from wholesalers, it might cost, for instance, 45 pence per kilowatt hour. If you can buy those components in continuous amounts, it becomes a whole lot cheaper. It might be 36 pence. Um, you'll also get economies of scale from the installer. So, you know, if, if you're if you were doing this on your own, it might cost you 25 pence per kilowatt for the installer. The reality is on a big scheme like this, it might be 18, 19 pence. So there are really good good options there. As, as someone said, I think it was Ju Julia, maybe, or Julie. Conservation area is a consideration. So you, you you can't have it on the roadside, but you can have PV, say, in your back garden. So they are there are they are manageable. And I think there needs to be a bigger debate about PV and conservation and planning, really. And not just that with heat pumps, too. Heat pumps are considered permitted development unless you have more than one. Um, the big thing about PV is you've got to think about your on-site consumption now. There is no longer a subsidy, there's no more feeding tariff. So you kind of want to use as much as you can because what you're using is displacing something that you might be paying 14 to 18 pence for. If you start exporting, the best you're going to get is probably around about 5p from one of the, the, the suppliers. So don't make these systems too big unless you can back it up with battery storage and time of use tariffs. And there is a real good opportunity with time of use tariffs there. If you look at something like Octopus's Agile tariff, if you avoid four till seven, that tariff comes out around about 9p, which is really, really good for your electricity. But also think about if you've got a heat pump, you know, 300% heat pump would then be heating your home at 3p. So time of use is going to be in an increasingly important way of shifting people's demand and therefore needing less generation at peak period. Um, so we're really excited by time of use and what it could potentially mean. Uh, and it, it's really good if you've got PV battery storage, you can miss that peak period and have a very low running cost the rest of the day. One final slide from me, I think. So some of the more minor measures that are easier are, first one's got to be LED lights, because if you've got the typical golf ball bulb in the picture here, you can install those yourself. And if you go to one of the online wholesalers rather than going to the supermarkets, you can pick them up for around about £2.50 a bulb. Um, if you buy a whole lot of them, they tend to discount by sort of two, to five to ten percent depending on how many you're buying 
if you're going to have recessed lighting like the you know halogen spots that many of us have in our home today, you will need an electrician to come on site. He will have to or she will have to take out your old ones, change your transformers because the the the, the uh, watts are so much lower. You don't need such a big transformer, so there is a cost there. Estimates on that are probably somewhere between twenty-five and thirty pounds per per fitting, just to give you an idea. Two other technologies, um, probably the most basic one is the smart thermostat. And, and really that's about learning and controlling your thermostat. So it will start to learn how long it takes to heat your house to get to a temperature, and therefore it can make those, those judgments. You can also control the thing remotely. So if you're stuck at work and you're not gonna be home, you can actually say, okay, I want you to come on an hour later. So reasonable control, but not total control. What smart TRVs do, and TRVs are the, the little one to sixes that you have on your radiators. They give you much more individual control of zoning. So currently your heating's probably just kicked in. You're now heating your bedroom when you're not gonna be up there for another two, three hours. So actually by having timers and temperature controls, you can change when you heat and how much you heat. So bedrooms typically, under sort of regulation should be 18 degrees, corridor should be 19 degrees, living area should be 21, bathrooms 22. Having these smart TRVs, you can actually set those levels or set your own comfort levels, and then you can set the times when they come on in different areas. So they give you much more direct control than the smart thermostats do, and they'll save you more. So you know, on the energy saving track, they're talking about 15%. I wouldn't be surprised if it wasn't higher just to having that individual ability. So there's some fairly basic uh, technologies there. They're pretty well um, uh, um, adapted now. So it's not like you're, you're taking new technology on that might not work. These things do work. They, they run pretty well. Things like smart TRVs, the only maintenance you will really have is probably change the battery in them every couple of years. So pretty low cost to maintain as well there are afterwards.